Hello! Today's video, going to do an overview of my new Harvey table saw here and my impressions with it after about two months of use. I'm going to go over the accessories that it came with, uh, the functions it has, some of the things I really like about it, some of the things I'm not too fond of, and we'll also touch on my experience with Harvey's customer service. I did have a small issue with the saw during the unboxing, so I'll get into that later in the video and explain what happened and how it was handled. I would like to be up front and say I am in no way, shape, or form affiliated with Harvey Tools in any way. They have, they have no idea I am making this video. I paid full sale price for this table saw. It was about $2,100 on sale, uh, plus tax and shipping. I would like to say a few things before we get into the saw. So if you don't want to hear me talk, please just go down to that little bar down there on the chapters and just skip to the next chapter in the video if you'd like to just get right into the talking about the saw. Okay, are you still here? You wanna hear me talk? Okay, let's get into it. Uh, I am not a professional woodworker. This is my hobby, okay? I am a factory certified master automotive technician. I've used hand tools between work and home 10 to 12 hours a day for the last 25 years. So I do feel I am at least slightly qualified to talk about the quality or lack thereof of tools. Uh, I, I understand automotive tools and woodworking tools are different, but due to the experience I have with tools in general, I, I feel I can tell a quality tool when I hold it. So we'll get that out of the way to at least give you a little idea of my background and where I'm coming from. I did have a decent amount of comments from subscribers asking about things on my new saw. So this video is for you. Uh, also, if anybody else is in the position in the market to buy a new table saw, maybe some of this information will help you make a decision on which brand you'd like to go with. So main reason I want to make this video is try to help some people that are possibly in the market for a new saw. So with that out of the way, let's get into talking about it. I personally had three main requirements that needed to be met when I started looking at getting a new saw. Uh, the first off being it needed to have a three horsepower single phase motor. Second off being it needed to have a 52 inch rip capacity. And third, probably most important to me, was it needed to have a easily removable riving knife that adjusted up and down with the blade. Uh, this Harvey saw met all of those requirements. It is the Harvey Alpha HW110TC52P. That is the only time I'll say that in this video. The unboxing and assembly took me about a solid day to do by myself, which I 100% do not recommend doing. Uh, it is a two-person job to assemble this table saw, especially if you plan on putting it on a mobile base. Uh, it is too heavy to lift by yourself and to try to maneuver it and tilting it, it's just not a good idea. So definitely recommend some help. The table saw came with all the needed tools for the assembly and maintenance of the table saw. Oddly enough, it did not come with a owner's manual or instruction assembly manual. Uh, I don't know if none of them do or if it just got missed in my box. Uh, Harvey does have all of their manuals available online on their website for all of their products. So I was able to go online and look at it. Uh, it's not a huge deal to me. I'm used to repair manuals being written extremely poorly. So it wasn't the big of a deal. Little side note, uh, if you're having an issue with the hardware and figuring out what goes where if you're assembling your table, if you go on Harvey's website and you look at the manual, go past the English, go past the Chinese, and in the very back, there's an exploded uh, parts view with a way better description of the hardware and what goes where. So just in case you're struggling, if you're clicked on this video to get that information, go on Harvey's website, look at the manual, go to the very back. That might help you out. As I mentioned in the intro in the video, I did have a small issue with the saw during the unboxing. Uh, the fence alignment viewport was cracked. Uh, so I had immediately emailed Harvey, I uh, got a response email within 45 minutes saying they're sorry, they're sending me out two new viewports. Within an hour after that email, I received another email with a shipping label confirmation. And then four business days after that, the parts were at my door. Uh, 
I understand things happening during assembly, shipping, production. It, I mean, it is what it is. Things happen. It's how the company is going to handle it that matters. And that aspect of this couldn't have gone any better. Uh, they immediately responded to me and immediately handled the situation. It's all I can ask for. So that's a huge plus for me. Now I'm going to go over all of the accessories that the table saw came with. As I mentioned earlier, it came with all the tools needed for assembly and maintenance on the saw. It came with a 40 tooth saw blade, which actually is working out really nice. It's a, it's a nice blade. I've used it quite a bit and I really like it. It came with two throat plate inserts. It came with the standard one as well as a dado one. Uh, the dado insert was an uh, unexpected surprise. I did not know it was going to come with it, and it's worked out really nice. It's nice that to have both of those. While we're talking about the dado insert, I did also want to point out how nice and long the arbor is on this thing. Uh, I can fit my entire 29, 30 seconds worth of dado stack on here, still get the washer on, and get the lock nut on with all the threads. The arbors, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but it's just coming out the back side of that nut. So this is a huge improvement over my last saw. About an inch and a half. I also know you can purchase a zero clearance throat plate that I will be buying shortly. Definitely think that's a needed thing for a table saw, having a zero clearance plate. It also came with this push stick, which is, I mean, that is what it is, is a plastic push stick. So there you go for that. It came with the overhead dust collection, as well as the blade guard. Uh, I do not have them installed. Uh, I had them on, I made about three cuts with them, and then took it off. Uh, it's just not for me. I understand it is a safety item. I took it off for two reasons. Um, first reason, I like seeing the blade. Uh, I never liked having blade guards on any of the table saws that I've ever used. They seem to get in the way of push sticks and push blocks. And I think it's a personal choice. I do not like them. Two, it was always seeming to get in the way of the shot for the videos I'm making. I know that's kind of a lame reason, but whether I'm standing over there and there's a big tube bar in the way or something's going on, it was in the way. I didn't like it being there, so I took it off. I uh, did find these one and a half inch rubber covers that you can cap the ends with. Seems like it's something that the saw should have come with because you're going to have to take that thing off at points in time. And if you have it hooked up to your dust collection, you can't just open that pipe up. It's going to be a huge vacuum leak. So I found these little rubber plugs that you can put over the, the pipe if you're not using the dust collection. Or if you're like me and you take it off altogether, you can put them on the port on the bottom of the saw. I will put a link in the description to those little covers if, you, if you're interested. Okay, the next accessory we're going to talk about is the compass miter gauge here. This feels like an incredibly well-built tool. Uh, the the tolerances in machining on this thing are extremely tight yet the operation of everything is very smooth uh, there are some good and some bad reviews online about this thing and mine is different from the three reviews that i watched uh, mine has an additional adjustment here on the very uh, back end of it for adjusting the tightness in the miter slot the reviews i watched didn't even have this part so that tells me that harvey is trying to improve the quality of their design of their tools. So that's cool. Uh, it also came with extra of the little plastic adjusters here that adjust the tightness in the miter slot. That's nice in case those ever get worn. The one thing that is a little odd to me is that the stop block is going to have adjustments in increments of a thousandth of an inch. That is really tight adjustments. Yet the angle adjustment gauge is just going to be an arrow with a gap pointing at a line to line up the angle. To have this be, to have the stop block be that tight of an adjustment tolerance and then have the arrow for the angle alignment be set up like this just seems a little odd to me. It would be nice to have a veneer scale that you can line up exactly on point with where you, with what angle you're trying to cut. I did see that 
Harvey does have a new professional model available for purchase separately that does have a better scale here for the alignment angle. I will not be buying that. I really like this tool. I mean, if it comes with the saw, it's irrelevant what they're selling separately. So I just wanted to keep this video to what you're getting with your saw. I don't think you will be getting that new version with the purchase of a saw. Uh, overall, I'm really pleased with this thing. It feels like a really high quality tool and I plan on getting a lot, a lot of use out of it. Uh, it is definitely heads and shoulders above what you're going to get with the vast majority of table saws that you're going to buy. Uh, it's one of the things that, from my experience, is really, really lacking when you buy a new table saw. The miter gauge that it comes with, it, it's, it's not even acceptable to use usually. So that's pretty cool. I really, really, really like this thing. The next feature we'll cover is the high-low fence function. Uh, this wasn't really a big selling point for me personally. Uh, I don't know how much I'll use the low fence feature of this, but it does enable another feature that I really, really like to be able to be utilized. Uh, basically, you just turn these knobs on the back and the fence can slide off and then be turned. it down now you have the low fence uh, again this isn't something I was incredibly concerned with when I bought this saw I don't know how much I will use this low fence feature uh, it has two viewports one is for the high and one is for the low I've actually put tape over the low viewport because I know me and I will look at the wrong one and line up my cut so as of right now, I put tape over there. If I ever do use it, I'll obviously just take the tape off. I did, when I set up the saw, I lined it all up. So it's ready to go. I'm just not sure how often I will use that feature. But if we loosen it back up and put it on the regular way. The way I will definitely be using this fence a lot is loosen it up. slide it back to about here. Now I can use it in conjunction with the miter gauge to do cross cuts, half laps, or cut tenons. Uh, the old way I used to do this was just to clamp a scrap piece of wood on the back of the fence here. Uh, the fact that this thing slides back it gives you a lot more room between the blade and the sub fence here, so it's way less likely that the material is going to twist and get caught in the blade and then become a deadly projectile. So I really like this feature and I will be using this a lot for sure. One concern I do have is these adjustable guides that go on the main rail here. They're just so small. Uh, I have no reason to think they won't last a super long time, but just due to the fact of their size and how tiny they are, just makes me feel a little concerned of the longevity of them and how long they're going to hold up for. Time will tell. We'll see what happens. I did add this aluminum knob to the handle. Uh, I turned this knob when I was in high school. It keeps fitting on all my saws, so I keep putting it on. Uh, one thing about the handle, I've noticed this with all the fences that I've used on different table saws. The magnet in here just isn't strong enough. It, it barely holds it. You just bump it, it falls down. Uh, I'll probably end up putting a stronger magnet down in there. The height and angle adjustments feel real nice. Uh, they have large heavy cast iron wheels on here. It almost acts as like a flywheel when you're turning it. The weight behind it makes it feel real nice. It's real smooth operation, it feels good. The three horsepower motor is a night and day difference from my old saw, which was a one and three quarter horsepower motor. Uh, I can't imagine a scenario where I'm gonna need more power. Uh, it feels really strong and really smooth cutting eight quarter hardwood material. It did take me a little bit to get used to the noise it makes on startup. It's not a bad sound, it's just different. It's because it's a, a higher horsepower motor. It, it's like I said, I don't know if that makes sense. It's not bad, it's just different. The power controls are in a real nice location. Uh, the off button's in a good spot for my hitting with my knee, which I like to do. The start button does seem to be a little small, but I'm assuming that's for safety reasons. 
It does have this pin that you can put in there to lock out the start button for when the saw is not in use. That's a nice little safety feature. Now for the few things that I'm not so fond of or I think could be improved upon. The right extension wing support legs leave a lot to be desired. Uh, the adjustment isn't enough on them. Uh, the way they mount to the side angled bracket on the side of the extension wing, not the top, uh, makes them not very secure. That's flexy. I uh, wasn't really happy with the design concept behind the way these legs go on. Would have been nice to see a telescopic style leg with some adjustment feet on the bottom to really give you a lot of adjustment out of it. I understand my floor is uh, pretty steeply angled away from the saw, but with putting it on a mobile base, uh, there was, I mean, it was two inches off max adjusted out. So there was no way I was touching it. So I had to add a four by four underneath the extension when he, extension wing here with a little brace on the side to get them so they're not maxed. Uh, you don't ever want to max out an adjustment on something. It's nice to have it in the middle. So, I mean, it's not a huge deal, but uh, it definitely could have been designed better, I think. The next thing that I've had a bit of an issue with is the locking knob for the height adjustment on the blade. Now, I'm not sure if this is due to me putting it together incorrectly and lubing it up too much, or if I'm trying to get a little overzealous when I'm tightening the knob. But sometimes when I go to tighten this knob, see if it'll do it this time, it will turn the adjustment wheel. So if you're trying to make an exact depth cut, and then you go to lock it down and it turns just a little bit, that's going to mess with the depth of your cut, obviously. And if you're trying to be real precise, I just find myself having to pay real close attention or almost use two hands. Again, I don't know if I'm over tightening it and it doesn't need to be that tight or if I just put too much lube on the backside in here and everything's just spinning and, and, and catching on each other when it finally gets tight enough to lock down. Overall, so far, I'm happy with my decision to purchase this specific saw. Uh, I can see this being the last saw I will ever need to buy. Uh, it does everything I need it to do and then some at a pretty significant price savings to the other brands that came with the features that I wanted. I uh, think that's about all I got for the table saw. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you. As always, I would like to thank everybody very much for watching and I hope you all have a great day.